Hey, uh, my name is Fabian Sturm. I'm the writer, director, and uh, co-star of Bones and Names, um, which will premiere in the Perspektive Deutsches Kino section at the Berlin Film Festival. J'ai du mal à lui regarder. Parce que ça me fait mal. Ça te fait mal où Là. Oui. Là. Garde ta main là-bas. Ferme tes yeux. Va vers ta douleur. N'aie pas peur, rien peut t'arriver. Par contre, tout peut se passer. Et toi, que désires-tu je, je veux qu'elle qu elle partir. Tu veux qu'elle parte Oui. Oui Oui. Mais où veux-tu qu'elle parte Euh... Où soll sie denn hingehen Keine Ahnung. Irgendwo hin. Juste partir, elle me dérange. Ah, elle te dérange Bah, dis-lui de partir alors. Je dois lui dire. Tu dois lui dire que c'est qu'il n'y a rien. Tu. Tu vas. Tu vas en allemand Tu vas, tu vas. Gay Quand tu peux te gagner Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Bois Bobak, and this time we are discussing the film Bones and Names. Hi, Fabian. Welcome to the Teddy. Welcome to the Berlinale. Hey. Thank you for Thank you. taking the time for us. Um, let's just start with what inspired you for making Bones and Names. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually working on another um, project when um, when the pandemic happened, and I was going through a bit of personal stuff, a breakup, and things like that. And I really did feel the need to um, to focus on something more personal, I guess. Um, and I wanted to uh, write a story about um, things that are close to my life and to the people around me. So it's actually a, a bit of a collage out of um, stories that have either happened to me or to my family or to my friends. Um, and it was quite exciting to to come up with the with characters and a story that uh, that we use those elements but make it fictional. Um, mm -hmm. And so it actually happened quite quite quickly, and that's actually, for me, maybe the, the nicest thing about this project that we did it without funding, and we just started to to work on it, and it happened in a few months, actually. So, yeah, tell me a bit about this process. It's it's interesting mm -hmm. that you worked without funding. It seems like yeah. that it was a very immediate, very kind of like raw and visceral yeah. go with the film. Uh, walk us yeah. through a bit. How yeah, did it all go? yeah, it's true. We, 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 me and my 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 two co-producers, um, Nicola Heim and Nele Schallenberg, we just we discussed about this, and we actually mm -hmm. thought about should we go for try out for funding, and which also um, means that you have to wait usually quite a long time right. to, to you know to to start shooting. Um, and but with this project, it was very strange. But all of us, we felt the some sort of urgency which was not stressful at all it was very felt very positive and we really felt like no actually just let's just put together a bit of <laughs> a bit of our own money uh yeah. and ask the actors and actresses that we are close to that we that we like to work with and uh, there was a bit of um there was a big family vibe with this film it really it was actually quite uh, uh, surprising for for all of us that you can make a film with that little <laughs> budget because it really wasn't very expensive um, yeah. but as soon as you as you try to um to work with people that you're close to of course um they were all very on board with it i mean it's not the perfect way of working in the long run because at some point you want to be able to pay right your people in the team of course but for this project it really felt like it fit with the with the things that we wanted to talk about you know we were we were all in this kind of working bubble for a couple yeah. of months where it was really not about money or budget or it was all about the shots and the, the characters and the sets and it was quite uh 
yeah, it was very, it was a really nice, special time. I don't think we'll ever have that again. But uh, mm. also, of course, we're all very exhausted after that. We kind of were like, wow, what did we do? But it was interesting to me to see that you can do a lot of stuff without actually having a lot of money. I mean, as long as you have a bit of a dispo credit on the bank. Uh, yeah, right. Fine. Yeah. Now, over the years, we primarily got to know you as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, how was it for you to um, move between the front of the camera, behind the camera? How was it to direct yourself um, in this film? That's, yeah, that's funny. A lot of people ask me about this and it, and I always feel a bit bad to say this, but it felt quite easy, I have to say. It was very liberating in a way. Because yeah. When I, I like, I love being an actor and I love trying to, you know, to um, to fit into a vision of a director. Mm -hmm. But I do have a tendency to, and I guess other actors and actresses have it too, but I have a tendency to, you know, you, you want to do what you find interesting with the character, but you also want to please the director, you know, you want to make yeah. them happy. Uh, and this was not the case in this film, you know, because I was so focused on the other actors and actresses on my team, on the shots, so, and I didn't... <laughs> Have a lot of time to stress and to be like oh what do we are you know what, yeah. what does the director want because i'm also the director so i was actually quite close to this vision anyway so it, it felt quite uh i think it really helped my acting because i was very free i was i didn't plan anything i just let it flow and it was quite uh exciting you know and it was kind of weird because they all were laughing all the time because i yeah. for some reason which i still don't really understand it was important for me to to also say action and cut in the scene, even when I was on camera. But it felt, I don't know, maybe I had to have this kind of control of when are we in the fiction, when are we in the reality? And it, of course, there are a lot of funny outtakes where I'm like in the middle of the scene and like, cut, no, we have to do it. Mm, so, uh, yeah. but it felt quite liberating. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Um, in the center of the film, we have uh, Boris and Jonathan, who are a couple. One of them is an actor, the other one is a is a writer. Um, where are these two men um, in their relationship when we meet them in the film? Mm -hmm. Well, they've been uh, together for eight years. Um, and so they are, on, on, on the one hand, they are super close and super comfortable with each other. Yeah. And maybe, I mean, I've never been in a relationship this long, so it's all fiction for me, but maybe... Uh, I was always thinking about maybe they're a little too comfortable already, you know, maybe they, uh -huh. I mean, they do struggle a lot with these issues of closeness and distance, which is, I guess, something we all struggle with in human relationships and, and in general, you know, whether it's in a love relationship or friendship or family, whatever. Um, but I do think that they're kind of, um, without realizing that they're, you know, that they're arriving at a sort of turning point in their relationship where they do have to, you know, maybe pause for a moment and, and, and think about, okay, what is it actually that we want? And do we still fit together? Are we still happy with each other? Which is something I, you know, from the outside, I do see in a lot of uh, couples who have been together for a while. Not to be judgy because it's, you know, I think sure. it's kind of normal, but... Um, yeah, I think that's the, the 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 friction of the of the relationship is really because of that. I think that they that they are both a bit surprised that this is happening to them right now mm. in a very subtle way. You know, it's never there's not yeah. a huge drama. I don't think in the film right. it's more about little things. You know, in daily life that yeah. starts to shift. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but then that's interestingly also parallels with both of them embarking on individual and like very exciting new artistic mm -hmm. journeys um Ooh, yes. yeah. in, in yeah. the film um mm -hmm. which seems also to interfere um with their relationship maybe it's yeah it's just a point that helps it's like an eye-opening point can you talk a bit about their their individual journeys um yeah yeah the film yeah well that's actually something i do, I did realize a little bit in my own relationships, I have to say that um, because when I'm working, I am very focused and it's some, it's probably my favorite thing to do, to work, you know, because uh -huh. it's yeah. like I don't make it like a, there's no difference for me between working and my hobby because that's actually what I do, like to do most, you know, yeah. writing, directing, acting, whatever. 
And so it's true that I can get a bit lost in my bubble. And I, I started to, you know, understand in the last few years that that can be a bit difficult for a partner, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and the other way around, probably, you know. Mm. Um, and at the same time, I do think that's something healthy, you know. I think for a relationship, it's, it's healthy to have your own world i don't think you have to necessarily become one person you know yeah right. and with this couple with boris and jonathan i think it's um i think they're both also in their working situations at a sort of turning point that jonathan feels this need to confront himself with his biggest fear which is you know losing someone death you know things that uh, you know letting go basically yeah so he's working on a novel that deals with that and he um, researches this subject he meets with people who can tell him things about um, about loss that is things that he never experienced himself and with boris i think um, you know who's been dreaming about working in french movies i guess that's not in the, in the film really but that was my my, my backstory always um, and he meets this younger guy so it's also a thing of which is something i'm quite you know um i also deal with you know i'm 42 now uh and of course i when i meet younger actors there, there is some sort of it's like a mirror a little bit you know and mm -hmm. um, that's what happens to him too he meets this younger actor played by magnus Mariusson, and there's this attraction and of course it feels wrong to go there at the same time that's you know it's quite tempting yeah. so i do think that they without realizing they they take steps from you know outside of the relationship from away from each other mm -hmm. which i guess is allowed you know you're allowed to do that but then you have to find a way back and i think that's probably the basic premise of the film that, um, yeah exactly can you find yeah. a way back yeah exactly right. um it was very interesting how the boundaries between um between art and private life um mm -hmm. get blurred throughout the film with many different uh characters um mm -hmm. can you tell us a bit about this aspect of the film and um and maybe just um how can something like this as a creative person be navigated how do you mean in terms of um the what, what do you mean like the the, the... How did you uh, approach it in the film and, and how the characters kind of deal with it um, in the film? Sorry, I don't, I don't think I understand. With, deal with what? With, the... with this mingling of like kind of losing track with, um, with the creative process and reality, how these two kind of blur into each other. Mm -hmm. um... Well, that's interesting because that was something that um, that I'm always fascinated by, I guess, uh, about this, what you just mentioned, this blurring of lines between reality and fiction. Um, and I really wanted it to be to be there, but in a, in a very humorous and, and, and subtle way. Yeah. Um, and I feel, for me, I have to say, uh, well, this is personal in a way but it's nice to talk about it actually because it's such a big thing for me but for me in, in, in my personal life I, I I've always had this actually I think like when I from when I was a kid and I started to see movies and discover you know cinema yeah. I think I was always very connecting to characters fictional characters you know I remember all my friends know this my family know this like characters like Carrie from Stephen King that was such a huge discovery for me when I was 10 I watched it on tv in secret and and really, it in a way, it helped me through my childhood, you know, my yeah. adolescence, because uh, I was so, and, and, and my whole life, I can look back and on every turning point, there's a fictional character, whether from a movie or from a, from a book. And so I do think that can help with life, you know, because at some point, someone thought about this character and wrote it, so they, they are connected. I mean, like I always, for me, that it, there's really not such a big difference between meeting someone in real life and meeting someone in a film or a book and so this was something that was from the very start uh, when we started working it was very clear to me that that was that i wanted to have this in the film in various ways you yeah. know like some is some are subtle some are not so subtle um right. some are sad some are funny but that was something that the, the whole cast also um 
got very early on. And uh -huh. I think they were all excited by this, that you could kind of, you know, fall in and out of this of these layers of yeah. Um, yeah. fiction and community. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about the space where you where you put these characters in. It was um like this very big, massive mm -hmm. white toned um spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. What was your idea behind this? Um, yeah, that was also um, very early on. It was quite spe I was quite specific about, and maybe a little bit uh, exhausting for for the for the team, but I was very specific about the the lines and the spaces mm -hmm. and the you know the, the tableau like uh, frames that I yeah. wanted, because for me I found it interesting and exciting to 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 create something very architectural almost and mm -hmm. quite. Um, controlled you know in in yeah. terms of the cinematography but then have it you know the actors and actresses uh, i wanted them to be very naturalistic and quite you know free and authentic but to put them in this kind of um you know very controlled setting um proved very yeah for me it was exciting there was something i, I was actually curious about this myself i thought ah, i don't know that this works but because in my in my in my in the film that i did before which was a mid-length film yeah. called daniel it was all very you know um, you never got close to the character it was it was always very distant and mm -hmm. for the for this film i was interested in um trying to you know approaching myself a little bit not in terms of uh in terms of making it easier to connect but just in terms of the acting and the, you know to, to shake it up a bit more yeah no, right. but I was very, we, we did it and with my cinematographer, Michael Bennett, who actually started uh, as a photographer. Um, it was really nice to work with him because we share the same love for lines. And okay, for, yeah. Know, very, uh, yeah, strict uh, um, settings. So we, we worked weeks before the, the filming we worked on. Yeah. Um, you know, he measured all the, you know, the, the, the frames and the angles and stuff. So when we were actually filming, it was quite easy because we just had to, set it up and then we could focus on the acting yeah 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 nice um you mentioned this before as well that there is this interplay between like closeness and distance mm -hmm. which then also translated to the camera work in the film there is like this quite mm -hmm. interesting play we sometimes get like these close-ups of characters but then often we see them in these like big white frames that you yeah. also mentioned um can you tell us a bit about your approach to to the visual language of the film mm -hmm. uh i always work a lot with in, in in advance i have to say like when even when i'm writing um because this is my third project it's maybe the fifth script that i've written but it's the third one that yeah. we really film and for me that's always my way in like i do when i'm writing i already start to imagine like most writers do i guess how the scenes will look like and i and i try to put together like a visual storyboard and mood board. I, I, you know, a lot of photography stuff or from old movies, whatever, or from my own life, you know, I really like to re recreate um, settings that I've experienced or that, that I've been in and that, that, uh, that means something to me. So there's really not, there's no line for me between writing, then you go into pre-production, then you find the sets, then you start shooting. It's all one thing for me, you know, like I already, while writing, I already note all of these things and, and, and collect um, images, um, which also, I guess, gives me a guide, guiding line, you know, yeah. because it, I need to, because this is all quite still very new to me, you know, because I'm started out as an actor. Um, so I can kind of, it's a bit like drawing by numbers, you know, I have to put it all out there and then yeah. it becomes a whole group. Yeah. 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 It's very interesting because most of the film takes place in these spaces that we just discussed, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's also very recognizably Berlin uh, yeah. setting um, mm -hmm. that we are in. Um, yeah. What is your relationship to this city and, and what role did it play um, in the film and in your creative process? Yeah, that's a nice question, actually, because it's I, I, I'm very connected to Berlin. I've been living here for uh uh ah, 20 years i think this year and um so i really love the city i used to i find it very hard to get into it i have to admit because i i studied acting in new york then i moved to berlin and 
for me, it was very hard to get into the kind of, you know, colder atmosphere sometimes yeah. that the city can have. But once I was, you know, once I got to know people and discovered the city, I really fell in love with it. So I really love living here. But at the same time, I was very, um, I was very certain that I didn't want to make, like the film is set in Berlin and it should be Berlin because that's where, you know, that's the city I know the best, I guess. But uh, I was very conscious not to make a, a, a film that looked like that you could see, you know, I didn't want Alexander, but I didn't want all the yeah, regular right. stuff that you see. So I actually enjoy hearing that people say what you just mentioned, that you say it's, it's recognizably Berlin, but at the same time, you know, you don't really see a lot of places that are where you could say, oh, this is Berlin, this is there, this is there. Yeah. But I do think that, I do think the atmosphere creeps into it, you know, the yeah, way absolutely. that you pass people together, the way that you, um, it's, it's, yeah, maybe it's an atmosphere of feeling, I guess. So for me, it is a film, it's a Berlin film, but it's at the same time, it could be anywhere, but it is Berlin and it was important for me that, uh, that you can feel it in a way, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Yeah, as a final question, I was wondering, I mean, obviously, the the film remains somewhat open, mm. probably with a purpose, um, <laughs> but I was still thinking, I mean, obviously, these characters are very close to you, you wrote them. Um, what do you think there is uh, Boris and Jonathan? What do you, oh, my God, is it? Uh, what, oh, cute. what do you you mean what what will happen to them you mean yeah or do, do you think or do maybe not even think but you as a as an individual who spent now a prolonged time with these two characters yes. would yes. you hope that they find the way back to <laughs> I, each other yes i have to say yes i hope yeah. that they find a way because that was but that's also a nice question because when i started writing it I don't, for me, it was clear they won't have a chance, you know, uh -huh. and it was also about letting go, but then, which is also why this film is so close to me, because through writing it and through filming it and editing it and now having it premiere at Berlinale, I, now I'm so happy that we found an, uh, an, an ending that is open, but for me, it is hopeful, you know, and for yeah. me, it's uh, also almost, a, what's the word, Utop utopia, it's like a, a yeah, because my relationships never lasted so it's, yeah. it was it felt very good to tell a story where i was like well but in in a you know and maybe somewhere people somewhere out there people can make it work you know by yeah. sticking it out and going you know taking the steps and talking to each other and finding ways i don't know i mean i don't know what ways because i've never experienced it but yeah. no i am quite ha hopeful for them but which is when we had test screenings, there were, you know, it was always very divided. There were people who said, no, of course, look at them. They will find a way. And then really people almost got into a fight saying, no, I really, I mean, they're awful. It's awful. It's toxic. They have to separate. And other people were like, no, no. So it's, what do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, I always think that, you know, like maybe even through letting go, you can find a way yeah. back and maybe it gives a chance to reinvent certain things so that's true yeah yeah so yeah sure. i was hopeful but i'm always hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too i'm on your side i'm also yeah. hopeful. <laughs> great okay cool yeah. thank you fabian um thank you it so was much. very lovely talking to you and yeah, yeah i wish you all the best for the berlinale hopefully thank you we will see each other thank at the festival yeah it would be nice